crowds and went on a rampage at a music festival, killing as many as 1,200 Israelis, injuring hundreds of others and taking over 200 people hostage who still await, in fact, of them, 101 still await release. 42,000 Palestinians have been killed in the past one year. The damage to human life is difficult to digest. Unfortunately, nothing has improved in the past 365 days. The, the situation is deteriorating by the minute and the regional conflict risks spiraling with Iran's 180 ballistic missile attack. The country claims that this was a revenge attack for the killing of Hezbollah chief Nasrallah. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made it abundantly clear that this decision was a big mistake. Israel has conducted sporadic attacks in Lebanon. Not only that, Hezbollah has launched almost 130 projectiles on Israel's third largest city, Haifa. Thousands of pro-Palestine demonstrators across the world, including Jakarta, Washington and New York, have taken to the streets in the wake of the October 5th attacks. So that's the that's the development that's there. In fact, joining us at this point of time is uh, Arjela Roshanthal, Director, International Relations, Ashdod Municipality. We're also being joined by Arnold Roth, former lawyer and executive in Israel's technology sector. Thank you so much for joining us on NewsX. I'm going to, in fact, start off uh, this conversation at this point of time, and we're going to rope in uh, Ms. Ariella Rosenthal into the conversation now. 365 days have lapsed since the attack on 7th October 2023. What is the current situation? Well, uh, the city of Ashdod, the fifth largest city in Israel, has been to, on the morning of the 7th of October, uh, we also suffered from the ongoing attacks that were on the southern part of Israel. For all, more than 20 years, uh, the city of Ashdod, along, along with other southern cities and communities, uh, woke up to the ongoing uh, missile and brutality of the Hamas terrorists that uh, penetrated and murdered and tortured and burned uh, the communities and the uh, people that were uh, celebrating uh, in the Nova Festival. And today we unfortunately still have 101 hostages in the Hamas uh, that must be released immediately. And we are mourning along with uh, the people of Israel uh, on these horrific attacks on that morning. It's a very sad and a very a emotional day for all of us here. And we a, hope that the future will a, be by the releasing of the hostages immediately. Right, absolutely. Let me now, in fact, rope in Mr. Arnold Roth into the conversation. Sir, you know, again, your expertise is in the tech technology sector and you know one such thing that has always been in conversation as far as you know the ongoing attacks is concerned is the iron dome and how it is robust uh, by nature the technology itself just for our viewers and their understanding how exactly has the iron dome uh, then sort of annexed israel and 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 in fact kept it rather safe we're a country at war and we're surrounded by countries uh, which are hosts to terrorist organizations who are flinging uh, unprecedented quantities of explosive, uh, explosive uh, weaponry at us. Um, if it were not for the technology and for the extreme uh, defensive measures that have been taken for generations in this country, where every home has or is close to a bomb shelter, the devastation here would be far greater. Iron Dome is part of a complex multi-layered system that shoots things out of the sky. Uh, I don't know how much foresight the military plan has had, but it turns out that that's exactly what we need because today it isn't just armies. And in fact, there are no armies who are fighting us at this point. There are only very large, incredibly well-equipped terrorist organizations and they, in large measure, are using weaponry which flies through the skies. This is a, a new phenomenon. They don't have aircraft. Mm. They have drones. They have uh, ballistic missiles. They have cruise missiles. They have every kind of 
thing that you can fling, the only thing that they don't have is a desire to actually defeat us. It has nothing to do with defeating Israel. It has to do with inflicting as much damage and pain on a civilian society as possible. And the tragedy is that uh, they really don't care at all how heavy the losses are on their own sides, as evidenced by the fact that no, none of the parties who are attacking us have bomb shelters for their own people. They do have underground safe, uh, safe places for their leaders, the insiders, the elite, but they don't save their own people because for them, and this is the tragedy of the war around us, the deaths are of equal value, whether the deaths are in Israel or the deaths of their own people. They all advance the case of the terrorists. Right, absolutely. Let me uh, rope in Ariella into the conversation. Of course, you know, when we talk about Ashdod itself, when these attacks started, Ashdod was affected very much. We remember that vividly. And again, when we just talk about the situation currently, we, you know, reports are indicating that 66% of the buildings have been damaged, 80% commercial facilities have been damaged so far. You have 101 hostages who are yet to be released, what is the demand that you then want to put forth to the Israeli government? Well, I have I have very much confidence in my government and uh, people uh, around the world must understand that these attacks on Israel will happen in their cities too, in Europe, in Ukraine, in America also. And this is not an, uh, only a problem of the state of Israel, but it's about it's a problem of the free world. Iran, which attacks Israel, which is attacks Israel directly, stands as the head of a murderous terrorist axis that means the Hezbollah, the Hamas, the Houthis, and more. And it's creating destruction in the Middle East, as in in Europe, and actually endangers the peace of the entire world. So I'm confident, and I'm sure that what my government uh, will is currently preparing. Uh, is in the belief that our country must must you know save and be secure for itself and rely only on itself because uh, we see what's happening in the international community and uh, people unfortunately do not understand that what is happening currently in Israel uh, will be in their neighborhood tomorrow morning. Right, absolutely. I take this conversation forward with Arnold Roth, proposing the same question uh, to you. What is the demand that you want to put forth to the government? And uh, yeah, first, let's go with that question. The public discourse in Israel for most of the last year has been divided between two uh, somewhat different issues which don't live well together. One of them is by every possible means, we must get our hostages back on one side. And on the other, by every possible means, we must stop these monsters from flinging their bombs and their missiles and their drones at our homes, at our kindergartens, at our restaurants and at our children. Uh, those two uh, missions have somewhat blended uh, in recent times because we're now at the point, if you look at Gaza, which is where the eruption occurred, uh, Gaza is a vast fortress existing below a series of towns, villages, and cities. And much of what protected the underground fortress is now destroyed. If I were a Gazan and I were looking around me, I'd be stunned and shocked and wondering how we got into this mess. And then I'd be asking the people who have brought all of this on my head, who are Hamas, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Why did you do this? And why are you sitting with your children in safe places, sometimes in reinforced concrete uh, tunnels with magnificent suites, and sometimes in hotels far away from here? Why have you done all of this knowing that we would be the ones whose homes are destroyed by the Israelis? That kind of an analysis makes the gap between let's save the hostages and let's defeat the enemy a little smaller. Everybody wants to see the hostages brought back. It, it was a catastrophic miscalculation, in my opinion, that Hamas decided that hostages should be a major goal for them, because there's no one in this country who doesn't want to see the hostages brought back. 
But in the details of this, certainly up until recently, it has mattered very much whether uh, the war should be brought right up to the face of the Hamas people, even if this endangers Israelis and others who have been taken hostage by the Hamas terrorists. But as I say, the issues are somewhat resolving themselves because there's not much left of Gaza. In, in uh, Lebanon, where Hezbollah has utter control of the government and of the terrain, we have yet to see how much destruction it will take in order to bring a stop to the Hamas fighting. And if I could just say one additional sentence, we hear a great deal of talk about how there needs to be a ceasefire. Mm. Uh, but we have to absolutely have at the front of our minds the notion that the other side in the north and in the south, Hamas and Hezbollah, and I would say the Houthis as well, absolutely don't care in the smallest way about the losses that their own people suffer. It's a, it's, it's a way of moving forward. The more deaths, the better. The more destruction, the better. It doesn't matter if it's Israeli destruction or the destruction of the homes of the people among whom they live. The point is the destruction. Uh, Israel doesn't see things that way. Uh, Israel doesn't have a desire to wreak uh, terror and horror and death and destruction on our neighbors. But Israel is remarkably united in the idea that at this point, anything that it will take to stop these people and their ugly uh, terror strategy is justified. Absolutely, Ariella. I'd like to rope you into the conversation now. Um, you know, when we talk about the United States of America, what is the kind of role that Israel would perhaps want the United States to now take on? Well, the United States, from my perspective, is a true friend of Israel, and I am sure that a that he it of course stands a, with the state of Israel. And there is a clear understanding between both countries uh, that the clear threat of global stability is uh, the core of of all the evil, if I can quote, in the in the world is coming from Iran, and together, uh, not only the United States but uh, the other uh, countries that are standing with Israel. Um, are against the ongoing uh, acts of the proxy and of Iran. So I'm sure that both governments, maybe even if the United States uh, phrases uh, that Israel, of course, has a right to stand against all uh, the evil and the ballistic missiles that were uh, launched on Israel, uh, but maybe must act in a, in a certain manner at the end we understand uh, that Israel uh, has the right to a uh, self-defend and will stand uh, as strong as it is against the uh, threats that we have from Iran. And uh, I'm sure that they work together. Uh, at the end of the day, th this is a war, not only of Israel, but of the free uh, world, the Western worlds, that all share uh, the values and the characteristics of, uh, of uh, the freedom of democratic states and not of countries that all they uh, believe in is the killing and the murdering of uh, the Jewish state. Right, absolutely. Honored, I'd like to rope you into the conversation now. You know, I've been speaking to people from Israel since the morning, and the one thing that they've, all of them have told me is that we are strong, we are strong, and we are strong. Now, there is no denying that there, this must have been a very difficult time for the people of Israel. Now, with that being said, what is the message that uh, Israel wants to put out to the world? I have to say I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, it's true that strength is greatly prized, particularly when you have enemies in every direction. But I think that the, the real uh, hallmark, the thing that makes uh, Israel special, and it is a special place, uh, it's, it's remarkable, is the determination to survive. Um, what I'm seeing here from where I'm sitting, it doesn't come across as, 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 as strength necessarily. I, I just spent the first two hours of the day with uh, two of my grandchildren who are aged two and four whose father was killed 
in the early stages of this war. He's not coming back. And uh, my daughter, their mother, uh, is strong, like the Israeli army. She's strong, 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 but she's not really that strong. She needs support. And I see Israel somewhat in the same light. We need people to understand our position. We need people to try to put themselves into our shoes, if you like. No one watching this would think for a moment that if they were surrounded by enemies in every direction who were flinging rockets into their restaurants and into their streets and into their kindergartens, that the principal goal of their own leaders would be, let's find a way to compromise with these people. Nobody thinks like that. That's just, uh, it's not reality. So like people in your country, like people in every country. Sir, how much is CV? Your CV is very good, but I'm not going to give you a fresher.